hi everyone joining me um so wanted to do some karma cards before we go into the next week see what's going up see what messages are coming so good in. to see you i had to like move my setup because the sunset is happening right now and it's just so beautiful <laughs> i'm just kind of like trying to like absorb all the sunlight that i can so i i wanted to do a karma cards with you and like i said there's so much information coming out and so much um meaning for on a spiritual level there's also a ton of information out there going on but it's like a mishigas right it's like a big mess uh and it's hard to follow some of the, the threads going on um so one of the the big message that i want to talk about today that has been coming to me and i've really had to sit with this in a new way and i think we're all being asked to sit with it in a new or different way is the very real spiritual idea of paradox a paradox right so in spirituality they talk about two truths two opposites being true at the same time and this is known as the paradox and i'm really feeling that at this time if any anybody else feeling that like you're seeing opposite ends of uh like two opposing points this can be information this just can be like feelings like this feels like uh, maybe the worst feelings or also some of the best feelings and they're coexisting. And, you know, we're, we've been trained to think logically. We've been trained to think with half a brain. We've been trained to think with our left hemisphere, which is the logical side of our brain. Um, and I'm a huge proponent of using your whole brain. I think we, all, I think we can all safely say we want, we want to use our whole brain, but from the logical left hemisphere, only one thing can be true. Right. It, it, if you try to put a paradox into the logical mind, the logical mind will reject it because it can't possibly coexist at the same time. Um, and yet paradox, paradox is real and it exists in this dimension that we're in. So I want to talk about densities again. Um, dimensions are when we talk like third, fourth, fifth dimension. These are measurements of time and space. So. The word density is a measurement of the rate at which our consciousness is vibrating. And without going into all the layers, because there, there's quite a few, there's there's eight major ones and with it, e within each density, there's also octaves, they call them, which are like little steps in between, like all the little steps you have to get up. So in fact, they're showing me this. They said, show it to them like this. It looks like um, a staircase going up but imagine that there's like a flight of 12 stairs and then you hit like a plateau point, right? That little, that little break that that's built in and then you go up another 12 flights of stairs. That's what it looks like. So you can kind of think about eight of those with maybe 12 or probably more steps in between. Uh, but let's just talk about the major eight and specifically let's talk about the ones that apply to this time period and paradox. Remember paradox being two opposite events or two opposite realities or two opposite uh two polarities like good or bad right like being true at the same time in the third density in the third density and this is the one that we are sort of we're very familiar with it's the one uh in which most of us kind of think of ourselves in and if we live in our logical side of our brain if we live in the left hemisphere if we're predominantly logical where we would all agree that we're in the third density, the rate at which consciousness vibrates. Now the third density is an important density. And in this one, everything is mixed together. All right. So all, all paradoxes are sort of shuffled in and mixed together and you don't really see them. They're, they're a little too convoluted. Um, and, and so systems can hide easier. Things can be covered up and, and sort of merged together and you don't see the difference. In third density, it becomes about learning how to make uh, a choice. You, you sort of have to use your own instinct. You have to use your own intuition to start deciding what integrity is because it's all kind of mixed together and you sort of can see how things go this way and how things can go that way. At, after third density, which again is called the choice, and this is how we are choosing to polarize or we're choosing to operate within the world. Either we decide that we are connected, universally connected. Tristan, please. Uh, hello. 
Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Either we're universally connected, uh, and we we see ourselves as one, or we we separate and we decide that we it's every man for himself and that we're separate. And those are the like the two big spiritual choices. Um, and most of the time, we don't realize that that's what we're like. That's the the lesson or the plan of third density and and many people actually don't polarize which is you know polarized to service to others or polarized to service to self most of the time we end up hanging out in the middle and this is where the idea of of reincarnation comes back in and where we might come back and repeat this level this density over and over again until we remember all oh, right i wanted to make a choice um but i think that we're very unique at, at a time period that's very unique I, th I feel like most have made the choice most have remembered and, and made the choice and you really see this when you um, hear phrases like we're in this together it's a big one it's a big hint for me like that 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 is a choice that people are making it's very beautiful and you can see you can see it everywhere you can see that kindness and the consideration of others everywhere you look fourth density then so if we've made our choice and we move up to fourth density which is the time period we're in now the paradox is still here it's unresolved but in this density in fourth density what we're in now we see what i call i, I kind of nicknamed it the detox vibration so what we see is intense beauty we see intensely loving acts we see unification we see all sorts of like coming together like the world meditation on 444 is an example of this beautiful act of unity but then we see something the opposite right a paradox so if we see intense unity at one point we also see a high level of selfishness we see those who choose to think that they're separate elite or different and it becomes very clear. And and suddenly our our, our poor brain, we're like, what? <laughs> because, you know, once you start to feel your polarity shift, once you start to feel the choice that you made consciously or unconsciously, you sort of expect to live in that now, to have it all around you, <laughs> right? And so when you see the things that are the opposite, the opposite of your choice, the energy is lower, it's denser, um, the, the information is darker, the, the clear, um, self-serving nature of it, if I could put it that way. We have a hard time integrating that. We, we see that and it's shocking. Uh, and that is the first part of fourth density is clearly seeing who the players are. So it's not about, you know, the, it, it's really an interesting time because we're really like... <laughs> Coming, becoming aware um, that they're that not everybody's seeing life the same way that it's not working together and yet because if you're choosing this so wait, here's what I'm going to tell you if you're watching this you've already chosen the unification path that's just you wouldn't be interested in this the minute I start talking about it you'd be like you know <laughs> and move on so if you're if you're still listening and watching, you're already in that boat where you're like, yes, let's unify, let's work together, let's be the collective, the higher vibrational group that we truly are. So when we see this this different group, um, it can be it can have a lot of effect, and you can feel the feels right. And what we must remember is that by choosing unity, we must unify. That's the the intent is to bring together. Um, and this is not by force, but it is through our observation of our thoughts and how we are choosing to observe uh, the mirror, right? Because remember that the external world is simply mirroring things back to us that either we need to heal internally on an our, our, on individual level, but also as a collective. This is what collectively needs to heal. So when something presents the wound, when something presents the mirror of the wound, um, it can be very painful to look at because it still needs to be healed. Uh, and it can, and the, the natural reaction is to recoil. We're going to want to recoil when we see it. We're not going to want to look at it. We're going to feel anger that it's there. Oh, there's my team <laughs> talking about it. But here's the thing, you have the 
the sustenance and you have the the spiritual I, I want to say like backup like you've got spiritual backup you've got your team with you um, it's okay to look at this and you will learn we will all learn how to look and not get emotionally entangled anymore we were, we're going to feel that divine protection around us where we can look at what needs to be healed without getting emotionally sucked back into it and as we do that we begin to heal it and we heal it through our objectiveness we look at things objectively we heal it through non-judgment of others there's so many people who have different points of view right now and the tactic of a negative vibration is to separate so to like stir the pot and to get us to ununite because you know the if, if something wanted to take down a positive polarity it would divide and conquer and we we all know this as we're watching this we've seen it happen that's that's how you attack something you need to break a unified field so as we see all this information coming at us that's different it's not comfortable we don't like it some some of the stuff we present feels like it's going against us what we need to notice is that impulse to the knee-jerk reaction to put a story on top of somebody or something the reaction to judge to want to judge it and, and claim it as good or bad um, and then our need to you know and then the feelings that come up whether we move into a place of forgiveness or we withhold forgiveness we want um, vindication right we gotta these are the things we're going to want to look out for and, th and there's so much stuff that's coming up that talking about how I mean today's reading the karma cards is talking all about the past and, I, and you know learning from our pasts I'm just I'm trying to listen to see if there's anything else I, I it's hard for me to get into specifics about this because the truth is convoluted and to really look at the truth we have to be willing to look at everything even the information we don't want to look at and I I there there's no way I'm gonna force anybody to look at something they don't want to look at that's very uncomfortable and I think that that's aggressive however I have been looking at a lot of things that make me uncomfortable and I've been asking my team like what what is the point of this and they're asking me to practice the the art of discernment and practice holding a paradox uh, which I feel like is the advanced version of all this of this time is holding paradox and I'll tell you why because when we get to fifth density and that's the one everybody talks about is like the wah, this is gonna be amazing what happens at the end of fourth density so we we we're in third we're kind of mixed together in fourth we start to separate and as we start to separate the path shifts later in fourth density meaning like as soon as we have um, clearly identified each other we actually kind of take turns we go on a like a, a fork in the road they go that way we go this way and we start to experience a very different life we start to move into a whole level of frequency because we're going through that the level of the heart the heart is so important right now this is like your tool of protection this is your tool of intelligence there's so much in this center that's about to like crack open to new levels. But in order to access it, we must um, work with compassion and forgiveness and non-judgment. And it's really easy to get an opinion or a fixed idea because something you see makes sense to you or is really comfortable for you. Like I, I'm comfortable with this level of information, right? And, and I get it. <laughs> I mean, we all have that. We all have that place where we've like, I've already worked through my feelings about this, so I'm comfortable with this. Um, and when it when we're being forced to look at more, or or being more is being shown to us, or, or the plot keeps twisting. And by the way, I just have to tell you that with Uranus so active right now, that's the plot twist planet. And it is squaring a bunch of planets right now. And squares in astrology, they mean tension points it means friction and activity um so and it's very active and uranus represent you know it rules aquarius we really are getting a precursor of the aquarian age meaning that how we treat each other how we think about how we would so solve problems differently than ever before all of that 
All of that is very Aquarian age. Um, so despite the events, not the events, not the information, not the rabbit holes we can go down, but rather how we treat each other, how we are co-working together, how we are trying to solve things in a different way than before, that's Aquarian. And it's very much that time period. We're getting what, uh, in astrology, what happened is Saturn, the planet of time. So time is a timeline is very important. And Aquarius represents the future. So the time of the future. Saturn has moved into Aquarius right now, but temporarily. So what we are is we're sitting in this moment where we get to kind of feel the templates of this next time period where we will be a, a new type of human, right? Advanced in emotionally, advanced in intelligence, advanced in coherence. So we were, we're going to learn how to resolve paradox. We're going to understand what it takes to resolve when something feels divided and separate, and but yet true on both ends. Uh, we're going to learn how to bring that together with peace. So Saturn's in Aquarius at this time, and we're, you know, I've been watching the planets and the stars, and nothing is coincidence. It's all divinely timed. Uh, but it's going to pull back into Capricorn pretty soon, and then it goes fully into Aquarius in December. So December is a time to watch for me because both Saturn, which is the timeline, which is karma, goes back into Aquarius, and Jupiter, the planet of expansion, joy, you know, prosperity, goes into Aquarius too. So I get the feeling that December is going to be a very important time for us. I don't know what it means yet, but I am excited about that. In the meantime, holding a paradox, holding discomfort, and why we don't want to... Okay, there's so much again. So uh, at the last full moon... They pointed out that during this time, it is very important to decide where you focus. It's your superpower right now, and it is the most important thing you can do. If you're going, oh my God, what do I do? Focus is what you do. And they said that you, you need to focus in the direction that you want to see things go. Even if you think, oh my God, that's an impossibility. It's not, but you should focus in that direction. And we're like, cool, great, let's focus in that direction. That sounds nice. I'd like to think about uh, a future time where things feel better and more cohesive and it all starts making sense. I absolutely love that. But then they caution, they said, right now, you're going to have to apply concentrated effort because there is a lot coming at you that's asking you to brace for something you don't want. There's a lot coming at you that's trying to co-opt your mind co-opt your focus and what i mean is it's simply trying to go like woohoo pay attention to me look over here look at this thing that's what i want you to see i want you to get emotional i want you to get invested in this and it's very um it, not enticing not in a good way but it's very like it's like you can't draw your eyes away because it's like watching a car accident right so um so what you want, what you're going to have to do is just pay attention to your focus. And you can tell when you're not focusing on what you want, when you start to brace for the thing that you're afraid of, when you're starting to brace for impact, that's when you know, I'm not driving this car anymore, something else is. Either fear or somebody else's thought forms about what things are going to look like. Is it easy to take your focus back and point it at what you want? Yes and no. It, it Ultimately, you know, it's a thought. So we, we have millions of these a day. So yes, it can be. But you, you want to identify the emotions attached to what you're bracing for, right? Usually it's because we're afraid. We're having feelings that our, our fears are being triggered and activated. And we have to address that first. So it's trying to like tell yourself to calm down, right? When you're, when you feel like you're not driving a car that's going too fast and you're like, calm down. Well, that doesn't work. So you need to acknowledge. So the, the first way through is, you know, you feel it to heal it. So you acknowledge your fear. You acknowledge what you're afraid of. And then what I like to do is I like to personify 
the negative thought form because I, I, I do better in conversation with something. Um, when it's too nebulous for me, I feel like I, I don't know if I can do anything about that. So I make it a person. I make it a personification of something, even if it's just, you know, some silly looking being. Hey, Jen, good to see you. I personify it. And what I've been doing as I catch myself bracing, because everybody is, that's human, especially when you feel the collective around you also bracing, you, you start bracing too. What I do is I personify that thought form. I give it a shape and I talk to it. And what I say is, thank you for pointing out to me what I don't want. I see it now. I see that I'm looking at something I don't want. I don't want. Thank you for that. I choose this now. Thank you for your service. Go in, go in peace and love and light, right? And um, if I, and what I like to do is, and this is funny, I mean, in the past I wouldn't have done this, but I actually like to imagine it's negative entity because negative entities absolutely hate it when they realize they've been of service. They It freaks, it just pisses them off and they have to go heal and do a whole bunch of <laughs> like contemplation on the point that they've been of service. And, and this is something that I've, I've seen and read about. They, they can't stand it. So when you can turn and face the thing you're afraid of and say, thank you for pointing out to me what I am not, what I, what I don't want to think. Um, thank you for pointing out to me my fear. I now choose this, right? So you take your power back. You can immediately feel that just dissipate. It just quells. And suddenly you've got that welling of power inside of you. Um, and it does help. I think the point that I want to just, the part that I've been working on so much and I just want to share is that paradox is real. Meaning like if you're looking at the worst thing, right? And you're like, oh shit, it's the worst thing. That's happening. And and you look everywhere, right? You go out to the grocery store or you go to where, wherever you're going and you see people in it with you and it looks very real. And the logical mind wants to say, this is the only reality. What you need to know is that something else, the opposite of this is also happening and it's also real. And, we, and you need to kind of gather the proof of that. Life is still happening. Life is still happening every day. Beautiful things are happening. Babies are being born. Um, the birds are singing. The sun is shining. Health is, there is health. There is abundance. It's out there. It really is. And we we might have to look back and, and ask ourselves, if I don't see abundance, am I limiting what abundance is, right? And that's, it gets you thinking though. And it's really, it's, it's really good. But if you understand that polarity or paradox is very real and very active and both can be happening simultaneously, I think it's going to ease your heart. Your soul already knows, by the way. Your soul's down with it. You've got this. You've already got this. You've already gotten through this. And you've already won on some level. And that's very real. But while we're going through it, we constantly have to make the choice. Like, what am I choosing? What do I choose to focus on? What do I choose to believe about life? What do I choose to give my attention or energy to? The other thing is... And I want, you know, you can take this or leave it, but I want to give you something that I feel deeply um, works for me and I feel it deeply. And if it works for you, you can take it. And that is that you knew what you were doing before you came here. You knew exactly what you were capable of. You knew who you were and you were up for this task, whatever it is, whatever this is, even if we just came here to help shift, shift the timeline or the perspective or you know, tilt the scale so we move into the better expression or the better outcome so that we don't repeat the past. You already knew what to do. You already knew what the plan was. You got to see the blueprints of this time period all before you signed up. And even though you might not remember that or feel that right now, you can trust that you are an amazing being that's bigger than this moment. You're not your body. You're the light that comes through it. And that light is expansive and it see it still knows. It still knows the plan. It still knows everything. And we can just trust. We can lean into that, that something is has got your back and it's the greater part of you. 
that you can totally you know lean into that just lay in in your higher self's arms and know that it's it's got you right now so hope that that feeling gives you some calm and peace and serenity all right let me tell you about the karma cards if you've never done them before let's do them right now there are three three decks here they're the planets signs of the zodiac and houses of astrology and i've already asked my team what's the message we need right now and the cards came out very quickly and these ones are like weirdly spooky like lined up and i'll explain it in a second but here's how you play there are two sets of answers the red are action related answers and blue are outcome so how you play is you just decide what it is you need right now do you need action related answers for this time period or do you need outcomes a lot of people choose both and you can absolutely choose both and while you're choosing let me tell you the flavor of this reading so we have the south node coming up as the planet and the south node refers to the past it is it is the karmic past we've got the sign of cancer who rules over the past <laughs> who rules over the fourth house and the fourth house is what has come up which is about the past done are you guys seeing <laughs> are you seeing the message okay thanks for playing i gotta go no, i'm just kidding it's all about the past so we are learning from the past Okay, so the fourth house does talk about the past. It also talks about your roots, where you come from. And I'm going to add to that the the higher self roots, the game plan that you came in with is technically, right, was be written before you were born. You could call it linearly the past. All right. In your in your natal chart, when you see the south node, this talks about like what you came here, what you have already done and what you're kind of like moving out of and the north node is about destiny so the south node is kind of like the baggage you came in with to kind of maybe clean out or sell off or get rid of and the north node is about your destined future so we're looking at south node in cancer in the fourth house right now and if you're choosing red or both or action your spiritual action is remember your feelings as you did in the past remember your feelings as you did in the past um, and this again goes back to roots it goes back to childhood I think it all also goes pre childhood is what it's talking about here yeah okay so they're saying the whole reason I was tell telling you about your you already knew what you signed up for and you were already very capable of it the feelings that you had I'm going to tell you a little bit about who you were before you got here. You little, you little piece of starlight. <laughs> you know, you were the beautiful luminous, you are the beautiful luminous light, the twinkle. And before you got here, you didn't look at the earth like the challenge that we experience it as now. You looked at the earth sort of like you look at Disneyland. You looked at it like, oh. It's going to be so cool. It's going to be so badass. And I have such badass ability. Like, I cannot wait. Cannot wait to impress upon this place my super special skills. So the the who you were before you got here, you knew that this was, this is a collective illusion that we're in. It is, it feels very real. It's very convincing, but it's, it's actually not because you're not, this is, this is just a, a costume I wear right now so that I can play in this game. But this is not me. There's so much more to me. And same with you, which is, that's your costume. That's the character you're playing, right? It's almost like we're in a computer simulation in a way. I know some, some people have talked about that, but you can kind of think of it like an organic computer simulation, maybe kind of like Avatar. <laughs> Remember in Avatar where he wasn't one of the beings, he was like in the being suit, right? Kind of like that. All right, so you were excited and you knew nothing bad could ever happen to you. Nothing bad can ever happen to you here. And that was exciting. And it was like, whatever happens, it's like when you go to Disneyland, right? 
and you go on one of the rides and you're in the haunted mansion or something and you're like, oh, it's so spooky, but you know you're fine. That's how you felt before you got here. The mental action at this time, reconsider attitudes from the past about your home base or your family. Now this one's also layered. <laughs> this is also layered too. So reconsider attitudes about the past from your home base or your family. Uh, the layer they're telling me to talk about here is resolving paradox and or and also moving into non-judgment, compassion, and forgiveness. You know, many of our personal childhood traumas that comes from our past with our family, right? And there was just something that happened. There's there's all sorts of events that happened where, from our perspective, it was a wound. From their perspective, what was going on? They're asking us to think about that. Can you find compassion and forgiveness for anything in the past? This is your first practice at resolving a paradox because both were true. So if you say, I was wounded in this past moment, that is the truth. If they say, I was doing the best I can, I didn't know, I was scared and afraid and da 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 da, whatever they say, also true. When we have compassion, love, and forgiveness, we heal that and we resolve a paradox. So our practice is right now is instead of trying to take it global where it feels too big, do it on the personal level and specifically start with the past. Start with your child. Start healing that inner child trauma. You, you've got everything you need to do this. The physical action now is not the time to use your intuition and do what makes you feel secure. I think they're what they're telling me with this is that there there's a lot of info coming through right now and every time we every time we move into the service to others where we join the collective if you're sensitive you're ultra sensitive if you're empathic you're extra empathic you become more tied to all the layers of information um and uh, like I said there are a lot of intuitives a lot of psychics um, and I've, I've been feeling this too, where we, it's like too many channels are playing right now. There's so much information out there. It's really hard to get hold of. Um, if you're trying to find answers right now, please, it's almost like you need to surrender that because there's only questions at this time. There will be answers, but at this time we only have the questions. Um, and because there's no answers, and that's one of the things that make us feel secure. It makes us feel insecure, right? If you can only if you only have questions and you don't know how it goes and there's you can see a myriad of ways of how it's going to go, oh, do you feel secure? Cuz I don't. <laughs> but and, I should say and security a sense of security is a feeling. It is a feeling state. Um and all it means is that the feeling isn't there. It's not talking about reality. It's talking about how you feel about it. And cancer, by the way, uh, is very sensitive. And cancer, ruler of the fourth house, very insecure. Uh, at its worst, it can be very insecure. Um, at its best, highly intuitive and nurturing. So there's insecurity right now. And it's almost like you need to surrender to that. The more that you try to find an answer in a, in a room with only questions, the more insecure you're going to feel. So it's almost forcing you to stay more present and look at the stuff you can work on, which is what we're supposed to be doing. But it's very distracting at this time. It's, it's a distracting time. Um, and that's what the stars say right now with all the squares and tension is that uh, especially there's one between Mars and Uranus. Mars wants to move into action. And Uranus is pushing back on that, the future is kind of pushing back and saying, you got to dig a little deeper. And we're not comfortable with that. So we, we sit in this place of continuing to search in the room full of questions. Yeah. So the, the only action that we were given that could really do, well, two actions that we were given that could give us any kind of security or number one remember who how you felt before you got here before you got to this place try to imagine the being that you are that's impervious to anything including death impervious to it cannot be harmed at all 
what would that being feel like knowing that it willingly entered into a place where so much change would happen? What would, what do you think that that would feel like if you were absolutely safe? How would you feel? And then the other one being that, you know, to start resolving personal paradox is to go into the past and to acknowledge both the wound, the trauma, and acknowledge both the innocence. <laughs> the innocence of the one who may have inflicted it or that you perceive inflicted it. And when you start to when you start to resolve that, that, that gives you more information about how to work through this time. All right. For those who are looking for outcomes in the south node in Cancer in the fourth house. The spiritual outcome, there will not be intuition to protect what makes you feel secure. Again, again, this is a small window. They said it goes from today until through Easter. So whatever, what, the 12th, 13th, right in that window. Um, we're going to be reaching in really hard. You probably already are where you're trying to get that feeling, that answer. And it just it's too nebulous like you it's almost like you see the wheel of fortune going through your head right the the spinning of the wheel and you see it like toggle toggle all these possibilities um so right now that sense of security that we're trying to get it's kind of like the bottom being pulled out of something um and how do we find peace with that i mean that's something that i feel like I'm working on daily or moment by moment right now is finding peace with not feeling the bottom. Uh, mental outcome, anxiety about attitudes from the past about support, right? So again, with that feeling of insecurity, it comes with this level of anxiety. Now, remember too, that anxiety is about what we can't control. And if you also feel like me, like a lot of this is out of your control, give me that thumbs up so we can all see each other. Anxiety comes from what you can't control. And it also comes from projecting too far into the future. Too far. Um, and here's what you can know. Here's a positive about anxiety. If you have a tendency to project very far into the future and you feel anxious often, what you can know about yourself is that you, my dear, have an amazing imagination and that's a superpower. Amazing. People with strong imaginations can project very far into the future, but it also causes anxiety. Um, so find ways to use that imagination in your favor, right? When you don't know what the answer are, is, anything is possible. So what would you like the answer to be? And if you can really m do some mental mastery where you are consciously choosing to focus on what you want to create that is what you're offering to the collective and it is very valuable all right physical outcome trouble resulting from the history of home base or family we're in the room of questions right now there are no answers and i think before we get answers there's going to be a lot more questions and again that goes back into paradox where <clears throat> excuse me where that doesn't necessarily feel good it's you know when you feel like you're in a like like the bottom is pulled out <laughs> i keep getting these by the way like right now like all the metaphors are giving me are like theme park based so i'm just going to go with that but if you've ever been on one of those roller coasters where they pull the floor out and your feet dangle on that, that that creates that extra tension, that extra sense of insecurity. And on a roller coaster where you're choosing it, it's even more exciting. It feels even more free. It's kind of like we're trained to to want a box. All right, we're we're not nat that's not natural for people, by the way, the the humanity. It's not our natural state, but it is what we've been trained to do. We were trained to kind of do the factory line worker thing, and they you you can find this information that that's how like public schools were created was to prepare people for factory work. There's there's a long connection with that. Um, but it, what that does is it teaches us to compartmentalize and expect a box. And when the box has been pulled away, because like it's a wild west right now, 
that can create a, a huge feeling of insecurity. It's actually probably the most magical time period right now because because you can't see where it's going and you don't know what what the best option is you can make the best option but it's all starting here and it's all um it's only what you can kind of allow yourself to imagine and it's still pre-template meaning it's a it's like putting um an overlay like a filter on top of reality. You're not getting that moment yet that you're creating because everything you create now, it it has to, it has to, um, you have to keep thinking that thought that you want to pull it into reality. And what you're seeing, by the way, what even this thing that you're watching right now is the past. It is the past, meaning the by the time I've said it, there's a delay between me and you. And by the time you respond to me, there's a delay. It's the past that we're both looking at right now. And everything around you, that painting, past. I made it in the past, right? The clothes that I'm wearing, I bought them in the past. And the glasses, past. Haircut, past, right? Like, you, if you really think about it, the, the present moment is in this antimatter sort of nebulous place. And that's where you're creating the reality you want. So you can trust that it's real. You're not going to get to see it with your senses because you have, you're have you making it right now. And the more that you focus on it, the quicker you bring it into the reality. Um, but it, that that is an insecure feeling for all of us because, you know, you can get in the moment and feel really good and be like, that. I made this and that I like the way that feels. But then you open your eyes and you're looking at your past, your past choices, right? Everything you just made has yet to materialize. And that's an, that's an insecure place. And in a time, in the time period we're in, we're heavily insecure. And we have a lot of questions and we don't know what the answers are. And some of the answers that, or some of the things that, the threads that we follow, we really don't like what we get. And that can cause us to start bracing for a reality we don't want. And so I, how I'd like to leave this, Karma Cards, is give you the power back. I want, I want you to know that you have the power. That when you catch yourself bracing, do what you can to acknowledge it. Be like, yeah, I'm fucking scared of that. That scares me. I'm bracing for that. But you know what? Thank you for pointing that out, brain. I don't want that. Or entity or or yucky future picture thank you for the service of pointing out to me what i don't want i choose this i choose health i choose ease i choose restoration i choose healing i choose all of these things for all of humanity i choose this now and i choose it intensely and the more that i keep going back to that the more empowered i start to feel So I know that these karma cards were probably not the cards that would make you feel the most empowered at this time. But what it does tell me is that the key, the key to the future we want is in healing the past. So if we spend some time on that, right? Spend some time with the parts of you that want healing now, you start to heal you, you will also create a new future. That's one of the ways we can do it. I hope so. I hope you know how much I love you. Um, and I really, <laughs> it's been, it's been a hard few days for me too. I've, I've felt the, exactly what this says is exactly what I've felt in the past few days. But I keep going back to the fact that the, the, the horror that I'm imagining or bracing for is still in my mind just as much as the future that I want to create is in my mind and I I get present right I get present with what's here and if we keep bracing for something that may or may not manifest right if it may or may not manifest if we keep bracing it we are we're taking our own peace away in this moment when we could have peace, we sort of can take that away from ourselves. So 
I, I would rather embody it. I'd rather embody my, my fear or my panic dreams or my anxiety. I'm going to make it this little troll looking being, right? And I'm going to thank it. I'm like, wow, that's yucky. Thank you for pointing that out to me. I see what I did now. And now I choose this. Thank you for your service. You can go. <laughs> like That's it. And then it, it, it creates a strong sense of power. Another thing you can do even easier if that one's a little more if you're like what are the steps all you have to do is say the same words that uh i was gonna say what's her butt said sarah i think is her name in the movie labyrinth right at the end when she recognizes she's trapped right she's trapped she what she want he's like do you you either are with me or everything you want disappears and then she kind of has this moment where she was like you have no power over me. And then she owns that state. You have no power over me. And the illusion breaks. And so if you feel those thoughts creeping in and you're like, I don't remember all those steps. Just remember, you have no power over me. And let that, let that wash through you. Because you are a sovereign being. You get to decide your future. And it, no matter what somebody else outside of you says... If you agree with that, that's your choice and that's how you choose your future. If you want it to be yours, you get to choose that too. And when we all get this, when we really get just how powerful and magnificent and creative we are, we win. Game over, right? We can walk out of the arena and be like, yes. <laughs> right? All right. So I'm sending you so much love. I hope you have... A beautiful and peaceful weekend and I hope that you know that that we're here together we're team awesome okay and team awesome already wins that's the spoiler we already win all right love you Bye. thank you for watching subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you know the next time I release a new video until then stay magical